All right, now we're gonna solve some simple manometer problems. So in a simple manometer problem, you can either be given atmospheric pressure and solve for the pressure of the gas inside the manometer, or vice versa, you can be given the gas pressure here and asked to solve the atmospheric pressure. So just as easy either way, um, I've chosen to do them both. Uh, we're given atmospheric pressure and we're gonna solve for what the gas pressure is. All right, so let's say that in both cases, H is going to be uh, 0 0.3 meters or just you know 30 centimeters and I'm gonna say the fluid in both case uh, both cases is going to be mercury uh, and we're gonna say it's at 20 degrees Celsius okay so in the first case we're gonna to want to find out what is P gas okay so what we do is we have P gas is going to be equal to P atmosphere and we're gonna have plus or minus rho G H. Well do you think this is gonna be a greater pressure here or a less smaller pressure than there? Well first of all we're gonna first consider some reference datum we're gonna say that this is zero uh, so we're gonna have that this pressure right here which is equal to P gas right because we have P gas pushing straight down here, so we're going to have equilibrium, otherwise this column of fluid is going to go up and down. So we're going to have this height here, we can have some arbitrary height, let's call it Y or something. So at the same level, in the same fluid, we're also going to have Y over here. So that means at this level right here, we're also going to have P gas. Alright, and right here pushing down, we're going to have P ATM. Well, now we can kind of forget all this stuff and just look at this column. We're going to have atmospheric pressure pushing down on a column of liquid above this known pressure, or well, this pressure that we're going to find, the P gas. So that means the P gas, well, it's going to have this column of fluid acting on top of it as well as P atmosphere, so it's going to have to be greater, right? Because as you increase, as you go down in a fluid, the pressure always increases. So uh, we know that we can get rid of this minus sign, so P atmosphere is, or P gas, sorry, is going to be greater than P atmosphere. Another way that we can look at this is, imagine that we have this pressure pushing down on this fluid. If we had an equal pressure pushing down on this side, in assuming this diameter doesn't change, then the, level, uh, then the fluids would be at an equal level. But if you have a greater pressure pushing down here, it's going to force this side up. So yeah, definitely P gas must be something greater than P atmosphere, so we're going to add on that term. Okay, so we're going to say that P atmosphere is 101 kPa plus we're going to have density of mercury at 20 degrees Celsius is 13, uh, 13,550 um, kilograms per cubic meter times 9.81 meters per second squared meters per second squared times H is just going to be our 0 0.3 meters. Okay, so if you multiply all these together, we're going to get that's a plus. Uh, we're going to get a unit in pascals, so we'll get actually 101 kilopascals plus this is going to be 39,000 pascals, so I'll just make it into kPa right away. 39 point, oh, it's 877 kPa thousand, so that's just 39,000 pascals or 39,000 kilopascals. And when we add these two together, we're going to find out that our P gas is equal to 100, and we'll just round, we'll say that this is going to be about 140 kilopascals, or maybe even actually that's 141 kilopascals, it's closer to. All right, so that makes sense. We have 141 kilopascals pushing down on this side, 101 pushing down on this side, so obviously the 140 is going to be stronger and it's going to force this side up. Now what about if we had this side? Uh, we see that P atmosphere, just by observing, um, is pushing down and it's forcing this side up, so intuitively we're going to think that P atmosphere is stronger than P gas, again assuming this diameter remains unchanged. So we'll do again, the, we'll do the same sort of method, we'll have P gas for this side, you know, let's maybe just draw a little line separating this. Uh, so we have P gas is going to equal P atmosphere and again, if you want, you can write plus or minus rho g h. But again, we're pushing down on this side. 
Um, so P atmosphere is going to be greater because it's forcing the side up. So P gas is going to have to be smaller. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to have to have something that's smaller than P atmosphere. And the only way to do that is to subtract. All right. So we have, this is going to be equal 101 kilopascals minus, and it's going to be all the same stuff from over here. All right. We're using the same fluid, the same height, the same temperature, all of that stuff. So we'll just have 13,005. 50 times 9.81 times 30 centimeters, 0 0.3 meters. Uh, so we will get, now you'll see we'll have 101 minus 39.877. And we'll just round this so we'll find that we get our P gas is going to equal about 061 kilopascals. Now let's look at this for a second. We got P gas now is equal to 61 kilopascals. That's less than 101 kilopascals. So again, imagine if you had 101 pushing down here and 101 pushing down here, same diameter, this fluid would be level. But because we have something less, we only have 60 pushing down here, this 101 is going to push it down and force up this fluid. Uh, and then if you want to look at this point here and this point here, you know, again, referencing off some datum where it's zero, then we're going to have this pressure obviously would be the same, you know, if this is Y, this is Y. So this pressure here would definitely be P ATM. And this guy here, you know, we're pushing down with P gas. P gas, it's kind of hard to read. So uh, we make up that difference. We only have 61 uh, kilopascals pushing down here, but this column of fluid is going to make up that other, you know, this depth of this fluid is going to make up that other 39.877 kilopascals.